Hey guys, don't forget to sign up for the bow. Just a friendly reminder. All right, thanks for watching. Good morning, it's September 23rd. Uh, Dusty just told me um, it's uh, the day the switch was flipped. So we're gonna hear lots of big bolts today. Um, he said, quit fooling around and just kill something, would you? And I said, hey, all those other times were just practices. We were just practicing for the big game. So, um, first bugle of the day. Pretty confident we'll probably hear five or six bulls. Um, and the good thing is the brush is very inviting this morning. It's not dry, or it's not wet at all. Um, since it got pummeled all night by rain. <laughs> we're full rain gear today. Um, uh, pretty sure it's going to be awesome. So, here we go. Looks like the other team's still getting ready, so we'll give them some time. We'll go up here and mess around a little bit. We want them to have their A game. We don't want this to be easy, so on to the next spot. seem to tell me what I need to get right Your eyes They can't seem to understand what I realize Realize This isn't just a dream Stuck on a bad repeat Fighting the air to breathe You can't touch me now Took me a while to see doesn't have to be you winning over me. You can't touch me now.
we can hear a bull way, way off in the distance somewhere. I'm gonna grab my phone, try to figure out where he's at, why we can't hear him so good. He's probably on the backside of a ridge or just way off in the distance somewhere, but we're gonna figure this out. It almost sounds like Doug Floaty over there, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, we'll, we'll see. If it's Doug, he's gonna be mad because we're gonna suck him clear over here. <laughs> if it's not, maybe it's a big bull and we're gonna shoot him. Doug Flutie's brother, Dick. Dang it. Well, we're just gonna keep on moving. Taking a page from the Born and Raised Outdoors playbook, we're gonna do the Cat Road Shuffle. As you can see, 
we've got <laughs> a road covered in alders. Um, it's an open road for driving, but um, nobody in their right mind is probably going to drive their pickup through this stuff because it's going to peel all the paint off. But uh, anyway, um, we're going to do what I call uh, trolling for bulls. What we're going to do is just going to walk and bugle, walk and bugle, basically the same as the cat road shuffle. Um, we're just going to bugle every little pocket we come to. And we left the packs at the truck. Um, we're not in super remote country, so if we end up getting something, and it will be a mediocre walk back uh, to the truck to get our stuff. So, got our rain gear on. It's kind of kind of hard to walk in full rain gear with a pack on. Seems like you get wetter on the inside than you do the outside. So, anyway, we're going light and fast, and we're gonna go kill a bill, big bull. So, hopefully, this all plays like we're thinking it's gonna. If not, we'll go to plan, I don't know, I think we've gone through A, B, C, D, E, F. So we're probably G or, I don't know, somewhere in there at this point. So, anyway, let's go. It's already starting to make me feel warm. I don't want to have a sauna inside my pants. I look like little Lord Fauntleroy <laughs> in my knickers. <laughs> Got my knickers on. So we're still just hiking and bugling, hiking and bugling. We're, cut, we're traveling real light and moving pretty quickly. And every time we get out on like, like a ridge point, we bugle from that ridge point. And then there'll be a draw, and then there'll be another ridge point over, over to the side. And every time we get on those ridge points, we're bugling because um, number one, if there's a bull on the next ridge point, We'll have a little bit of time to, to make a, a play with that um, as far as for wind and position. Um, also, it allows your sound to travel a lot further. Sometimes we'll get inside one of those draws. With the corners, it's a draw. And we'll do a little bit of cow calling and maybe a bugle, a quick bugle. Just to make sure we're not going to walk up to the next ridge point and bump something. But we're trying to get something down below the road or something up, but it's bedded up high on the ridge here. Um, we're not really doing anything any different than a bull elk does. During the rut, those bulls will hit these old roads or trails, um, depending on where you're at, and they cover country, uh, trying to find more cows to add to their harem. Maybe they got no cows, maybe they got all the cows, but that's exactly what they do. <clears throat> when the rut really fires up, you'll start seeing bull tracks in these old roads or on trails, um, just covering country. They'll, instead of just walking across the road, they'll walk for a half mile down, down the road. You'll follow the tracks and you'll see where they've covered a lot of country, just trying to find some other, some other elk. So anyway. We're just doing the same thing the elk are doing. And uh, it's right in the middle of the day, uh, midday madness. So we're kind of hustling along here. Left the truck a little after 12. Um, I love that 12 o'clock to 1.30 time period. Um, those bulls are in their beds, kind of stove up and uh, looking for a rumble. So um, we just gotta find, we just gotta find one. 
and uh, hopefully he bugles. And if he does, I'll do the rest. And if not, well, I guess we'll just keep looking. <laughs> so, anyway, here we go. Was that a bull yeah. or a woodpecker? That was a bull. Where at? Straight in the bottom. Straight out. Straight out. Okay, we think we heard a bull way, way off in the distance. Um, so we're gonna try to figure out where he's at. I talked earlier about using maps to try to figure out the play on an elk. And as you can see behind me, there's just nothing but brush. Um, so this is gonna give us satellite imagery. It's gonna give us a topo, uh, or it'll give us a, a hybrid of both. And we're gonna be able to look at, see what's over where we thought we heard that elk and kind of make a play on that. Okay, we've located that bull we heard earlier. Um, he's not, not up on the ridge, he's down the very bottom. Um, with the wind's blowing downhill, so we're gonna have to try to figure that out and uh, work him off of that. But uh, I'm gonna kinda see where he's at right now. I think he's just right down in there. It's, it's a ways, but it's pretty echoey when he bugles. little bit of wind I can't hear. Um, just keep pressing on till we find him. He cut me off, so right over there. So we're gonna have to go over here get the wind and have try to suck him across this ridge toward the wind's good so yeah let's do it <laughs> he sounds good sounds pretty pissy over there we're gonna drop some elevation here and make him come side hill to us and uh Put an arrow through his vitals. That ball's hot, he's ready to fight. But he blows this way, it blows this way, and then it comes up. So we gotta go way out that ridge and come in from the complete opposite way. I hope, I hope we can find a better win. I don't know. Frustrating. That's the worst part of, of bow hunting elk is trying to outguess the wind. So with being a cloudy day, you just you don't know what you're gonna get. And we got to go. We got 
steps to go. So we're relocating over here to get the wind advantage. Uh, we had to walk quite a ways. We're putting a small finger ridge in between us and the bull. We're gonna drop elevation, get on the same elevation as him, and then slowly creep around the edge of that ridge and then let her rip again. So um, hopefully he doesn't lose interest or hopefully he doesn't hike up the hill where we just left because he was bugling pretty hot. Um, anyway, we're off. Frustrating, to say the least. <sighs> I climbed down this nasty old hell hole. Get out 150 yards from the bowl. The wind just will not give us a break. Unless he chickened out, but I'm pretty sure not. This wind is just kind of going every which way and over to him. sit tight here for a little bit and see if he just clammed up or what. We'll see if he starts bugling again. Okay. He bugled again. Good. So the wind didn't screw us. Turns out he's a chicken. <laughs> he's probably got cows. A cow. Whatever. We're gonna climb, we're gonna go over there. It's nothing but a big mess down on this draw here. We're gonna go go through that draw and then see if we can find him. The wind is just ridiculous. It goes every which way we can imagine. The likelihood of pulling this off is like 10 to 1 odds against us. <laughs> but that's why we do it. If it was easy, everybody do it. So let's go get him.
got some string sticks popping. I didn't see anything, but I heard some sticks up in here popping. I don't know if he saw us walking or what, but... Dusty said he heard some brush up here popping. So, we're gonna climb up there and see. This ain't over yet. that same one we called in the other day. It's the same area, other side of the ridge, different drainage. <sighs> he was pretty, he talked a lot of smack from a distance, but when we got close, he got, got weird, so. Or maybe somebody else has messed with him. I don't know. Maybe we'll just sit here a little bit, bugle, and see if he comes back. Probably won't. <laughs> We've been jiggered. Uh, last we heard that bull, he was off in the distance and um, heading the other way. So, with the time being late in the day, with no packs, um, we're gonna climb back up out of this nastiness and uh, see if we can fit one more in. See if we'll find one more bull. Um, we did find another bull, but it was a, a bull moose. So, he was barely a bull. <laughs> He, he probably even gets confused with a, for a cow every now and then. It'd be a little embarrassing. He's got tiny little spikes, but anyway, we're gonna climb up out of this dirty, rotten hell hole, get to the road, hike back to the truck, relocate, find a bigger bull that wants to fight. And hopefully that happens. So, let the fun begin. <laughs> This is some pretty epic elk country, you know, lots of uh, old reprod, really great places to hide, and lots of brush to feed on. There's trails from back in the olden days. Must have been a heck of a bunch of elk here back in the 90s, pre-wolf, but uh, these days, there's just nothing here. Um, we found one bull down there and one moose, bull moose, and there was not a lot of sign like those are the only elk living down there. Um, you know, we're up here on the road and uh, it's pretty obvious why. Uh, just about any trail, any road you follow in North Idaho, you're gonna find a lot of wolf scat. Um, and what, what elk that don't get eaten or displaced and moved around, um, it, it makes them weird, it makes them different. They don't act like elk, they don't do elk, normal unpressured elk things. Um, they live with stress 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. and That really changes their life cycle and their gathering of nutrient rich food. And I think it, it makes their calf survival tougher. And what the, 
what calves the, the wolves don't eat, then it makes them it makes them harder to survive a harsh winter. They're about the harshest winters you can find up here. But anyway, um, yeah, it's a sad story. There's a lot of naysayers and a lot of people who try to try to say it's habitat um, and try to say uh, the wolves don't cause that big of a problem. The Idaho Department of Fish and Game came out with a big uh, summary and a, a bunch of data they'd compiled on elk and said that uh, mountain lions actually kill more elk than wolves but uh, I think their sampling is flawed. Um, they, they had radio colored elk that they examined uh, to see what the cause of death were. Uh, I believe um, of those radio colored elk, the cougars probably did kill the majority of them. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, in this vast countryside, millions and millions of acres of public land, national forest, and um, I, I think their their process is pretty flawed. You see, you very seldom see much for cougar sign. You never see their tracks. You don't see their scat. You don't see them too often. Um, ask town hunters. There's not as many many cougars as were, there were in the 90s when elk and deer were at their heyday. Um, but uh, one thing you will find for certain is uh, wolf sign throughout North Idaho, unfortunately. I don't know what the answer is. I don't think they're going away. Um, there's not going to be any kind of a, a mass um, extermination of wolves. Um, you know, that's just not, not going to happen. But uh, I think the Department of Fishing Game needs to be a lot more proactive and keeping those numbers in check through uh, trapping uh, with government trappers. Because Joe Citizen, we all have day jobs. We all have an income that's very limited. Um, and it takes a lot of money to trap wolves and stay on top of it. So anyway, I'll get off my soapbox and get back to hunting. But uh, when you see a sign like this, then it just kind of refreshes in your mind why there's not lots and lots of elk here anymore. So uh, here's a little tidbit of information for you about the bugler. The man makes noise from his body 24-7. I mean, besides him talking non-stop um, you know I have to listen to him jabber on and on I mean it's always like me 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 I I I me I me I um, besides that he uh, he bugles constantly when he's not talking he's bugling so I gotta listen to that a lot ears are ringing um, do you, must you blow so loud and then besides that in the night the man snores so then I gotta listen to the snoring all night long and to top it off if uh, you give the man that mountain house well you can imagine what comes out of him after that so, I, I don't know, <laughs> it's non-stop noise out of the bugler. It's weird. I've never seen anything like it in all my life. Um, and I, I can't get away from it, uh, you know. Um, yeah, so, it's just a little extra information about the bugler I thought you'd enjoy learning about. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be a rough, rough 14 days. All right, I'm out.
Okay, we we're on the other side of the hill. We heard this bull, we heard this bull bugling across the river, creek, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I decided we're gonna come over here. We got probably about an hour before dark. Um, if some magic happens, we might be able to call him in, get a shot. So we're gonna hike up the hill and bugle him in. He's coming or what? Clammed up.
All right, guys. Um, I think we're just gonna run out of light here. Um, that bull has gone up. There's a big ridge over there with a big flat on it. Um, sounds like he's gone up over there. We can't hear him anymore. Um, so I think in the spirit of smart hunting, we're gonna boogie out of here um, tonight and uh, we'll be here first thing in the morning. We'll have a good downhill thermal wind sucking down the, the hill here and um, We'll work our way up in here and uh, see if we can find him. Um, already, in just the small amount of time that we've been over here, I've seen quite a bit of elk sign. You know, there's lots of rubs. Um, there's uh, some elk scat, if you will. Um, so it looks like there's some elk living in here. So I think we'll, and there was a fresh bed with fresh pee in it. Um, so we're gonna get out of here hike back up in here tomorrow and uh, hopefully notch a tag on a big beautiful bruiser of a bull. Thanks for watching. Comment below if you think uh, Dusty Roop is doing a good job. Um, and if he isn't doing a good job, please comment below too. <laughs> he, the guy's a little bit of a chatty patty. So, I don't know, he said he wasn't a chatty patty. He said, I'm not a talker, I'm not a talker on his his uh, job interview film. But the uh, only time I can get him to shut up is if he's eating. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Um, we'll get him tomorrow. All right. I had to sneak away for a minute. Oh, can you believe this guy? Uh, <laughs> comment below, he says, about me. Yeah, classic Durham right there. He's trying to take the focus off of himself only because he knows, he knows I'm on to him. He knows I'm gonna expose him. Um, he knows he's not doing a, you know, the bugler thing, you know, getting an elk having them come to him. All the elk are running from him. Um, yeah, so... I got more secrets about him. Um, they're coming, so... Stay tuned to that, and... Uh, you know, I don't claim to be... I didn't claim to be an awesome videographer. You know, he just said he needed a cameraman. So I applied. Here we are. Um, you know, I don't have the filmer written on my hat, you know, like he's got the bugler. I don't claim to be something I'm not, Durham, all right? So, uh, yeah, you're gonna be exposed. I, I think it's already been shown, but uh, there's more coming, so. All right, I better go, he's looking at me. All right, see you later.